In this video, we're going to quickly sign up for a free web hosting service with infinityfree.com. If you've not done so yet, please load in your browser, infinityfree.com. This tutorial is only going to cover the creation of a basic site and how to set up the necessary FTP services for uploading files. Okay, so you're on the front page of Infinity Free. You should find the register button. Click it so we can get started. On the next page, it's going to ask for pretty standard registration information. You'll need to provide an email address and pick a password. After you've entered a sufficiently complicated password, be sure to click the checkbox and agree to the terms and then click sign up. The next page is going to ask you to verify that you are a human by giving you some boxes you need to look at and pick certain types of images. I always find these image choice thingies a little annoying, but I get it while they're there. Once you're done, you'll see a message about checking email for a verification link. So go ahead and scoot over to your email and check for a link from Infinity Free and click it. If you don't get an email, maybe wait 10 minutes or so and check again. These verification emails do get sent out pretty quickly, but if you don't get one, just click the verification button to resend the email again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead. On this page, before you continue, you're gonna to have to agree to the cookie statement at the bottom. Now, at this point, you might get confused because although you signed up for an account, this page says that you have no hosting account. Don't fret it, get worried, or start tripping. Up in the top right, it'll show you that you've registered. You have an account, but no hosting account. What this means is that you can host up to three different websites or hosting account. This is pretty cool, right? So go ahead and click the link to create the account now. At this point, you're going to see a button for a subdomain with a text box for that name you want to create, as well as a drop down for some different extensions. So in this drop down, just pick a top level domain and a second domain combination that you like. I'm going to pick, how about greatsite.net instead? Cool. Okay. So again, pick whatever you like. For my subdomain, I'm going to pick first free site and click for availability and it's free. Awesome. Moving on. So now I need to set a password for this hosting account, which for infinity free says it's a unique password with eight to 15 characters, letters and numbers only. And then we'll click create account. Now I'm getting that annoying image verification thingy again. You might not get one, but if you do just follow the instructions on which images to click. Oh, this is going on forever. Okay, skipping past these for right now. And that took forever. And awesome, my new hosting account has been created with a username listed here. Now that I've done all this, I must warn you that it could take a few minutes for the control panel to be enabled. And it could take up to 72 hours for a new domain name to be visible. So let's click finish and see what we have. You should see at this point a page that gives options for working out domains, FTP details, MySQL databases, and other things that I'm not really going to go into for this video. So the important thing to remember is this, the username and access to this password. Let's click on the domains and take a look at our site. If we click on the link, we're going to see a sample website set up for us already. And it looks pretty snazzy. Um, don't worry though, we're gonna remove this after a while so that we can upload our own site. Okay, so let's go back to the main page again and click FTP. Here we can see the FTP username, FTP password, and we also see an FTP host name, which is not quite right, but we'll dig into that in a moment. If we go back to the control panel button to control whether it has permission, click on control panel, this will load a page that says Vista panel. If you get this notice, then you must click I approve to go forward. Okay, so the correct URL for uploading can be found here by clicking on account settings. Now, I'm not sure why Infinity Free did this where they put the incorrect URL for uploading as ftpupload.net when the correct 
URL for uploading via FTP is ftp.infinityfree.com. Now, I recommend that you keep this information on hand because next we're going to go ahead and set up VS Code. With VS Code open, the first thing I want you to do is open a folder that we can use for testing. Um, to open the folder, go to File, Open, and you need to drill down to the location of the folder that you're going to be using. As you can see here, I went to my NMC folder, I went to CS222, and then to First Web Page Project Folder. Now, do not open the parent folder of First Web Page Project Folder here. You want to make sure you've drilled down to the appropriate folder. Otherwise, when you install the SFTP plugin later, you're going to be running into some issues where you're syncing the parent folder and its contents instead of only the project folder. It can get kind of messy. So drill down to what you see here with this index.html. At the level of the index.html, if other folders exist like image directory, CSS, scripts, so forth, those are fine. We just don't want to be above the first web page project folder. Now, go ahead and open that up. Next, you're going to look for an icon on the left that has some squares on it. These are the extensions. You may have some other icons like I do, or if you don't, it's because you haven't installed other plugins, and that's fine. Uh, for this tutorial, you only really need to worry about the SFTP plugin. So once you've clicked on the squares, in the search window, type SFTP. And you're going to look for a plugin that's called Natiskunk. you got to love these names. Um, in a previous video, I recommended the Lixmomo extension. And what we found out is that it is no longer supported and maintained. So if you click on the Natty Skunk icon here and we scroll over, we can see that it was actually forked from the Lixmomo FTP plugin, which as it says here is no longer maintained. So this is good news because this is actually a really good plugin and I'm glad they're continuing to maintain it. If we scroll on down the page a little bit, there's some installation instructions and so for us, we're just going to click Install, and it installs really quickly. After it's installed, scroll on down the page a little bit more because there are other instructions on how to configure the SFTP plugin. Now, if you're on Windows, you're going to type Control-Shift-P, or on a Mac, Linux, you're going to type Command-Shift. And what that's going to do is create a hidden folder called VS Code uh, inside your project folder. And inside that hidden folder, there's going to be a new file called sftp.json, which is going to look exactly like this. There may be a few differences, but we'll work through those in a moment. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our project folder we opened. We're going to do Command Shift P if you're on a Mac, or Control Shift P if you're on uh, Windows. Select the sftp config. And you can see it's actually created this config file now inside my project folder. First thing we're going to do is change the name that references our server. Here I'm going to call it uh, Infinity Free Host 1. And for the host name, I'm going to use ftp.infinityfree.com. I'm going to change the protocol from SFTP to FTP, and this is because Infinity Free doesn't support secure, only unsecure. It's kind of a bummer, but for our purposes, it's not a problem. So we're going to change that just to FTP instead of STP, and we also have to change the port from port 22 to port 21. Now, much of this information is can be used on any website that you have that you're trying to use for FTP. So for example, if you're using the triple zero web hosting, same process here. You just need to make sure you have the right host name, uh, make sure their protocol supports SFTF, rephrase, make sure their protocol supports SFTP. If they don't, just change it to FTP and change the port as well. Okay, so now we get to some of the information here that I'm gonna hide from you all, and that is the, um, the username. So I'm going to copy my username and paste this in. And this should be blurred on your end. I'm going to change the remote path 
to HT docs and I don't see a password here so I'm going to hit enter after the username I'm going to type password and I need to paste in my password again I'm going to blur this out so you all can't see it although by the time this video is on the web I will have changed that password all right make sure you do have a comma here at the end of your password line uh, a few other things that we need to take a look at here. Um, number one, if we want our file to be uploaded automatically on save, then we're going to change that from false to true. I'm not going to do that because I, I really don't want um, partials pushed up onto a live web page. I, um, I would rather keep those separate until I'm ready to post them. Okay, with all of that done, just basically save it. And we're gonna come over here. And what we'll do is we'll just say, um, let's do it this way. We'll go to index HTML. Um, we're going to change it real quick. We're gonna type paragraph and my new, uh, let's see, some updates, how about that? Now, before I make those updates, I just want to pop over and show you the, the site. You can see here, first free site dot great site. If I refresh it right now, this is what is there. Um, we're going to go back to our Visual Studio page, our project, and I'm going to right click on this page and just go to upload file. And if we come down here, we can see uh, it's attempting to push the information up okay so it looks like it was successful let's go back to our web page and see what if the changes appear and there it is some updates um, I'm gonna make one other change just so that you can see that there is some uh, larger changes happening we're gonna say style and inside of this I'm gonna say body And for the body, I'm going to say um, background color is pink. We'll save that. Again, we'll just do an upload of the file. I'm going to switch back over to our page and refresh it. And there we go. Okay, so that's it for this plugin. It's very basic. There's a number of other things that you can look at. Um, on the extensions page for the SFTP plugin. And uh, I recommend you take a few minutes to explore all the other options. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can automatically see any of the new content I'm making available. All right, cheers.